Point four, we got the save their soul, protect their eyes, protect their ears, guard their ears. But then I want to talk about the mouth. Now, normally with the mouth, we think about what comes out, and there's an application there, but we're just going to talk about what goes into the mouth. And I know Jesus says it's not what goes in that destroys, it's what comes out. Very true in the heart. But I also want to educate you that to a certain extent our depraved U.S. government wants to set the standard for what food is healthy. And today we've got them creating veggie burgers, soy burgers that demasculate people and take away the energy. Uh, the food is not normal. There's lab-grown meat that I think is an abomination. There's food that actually has inoculations in it and toxic additives. This is important. I believe it's the parents' responsibility to protect their children what goes into the mouth. Don't let your children eat Halloween candy. I mean, I've heard horror stories when I was a kid about, oh, there was glass or poison or needles those kids got. How about the corn syrup? <laughs> Brother Clint and I were talking about earlier, we have the suckers back there for the children that took their picture. And he's like, oh, an organic sucker. That's neat. Okay, without the corn syrup, I'll try, I have to try it. I'll prove it. And I said, good. And I said, by the way, most of your corn syrup actually has mercury in it. It's just a, a byproduct of how they process it and how they make it. And so there's that neurotoxin that's present inside of the corn syrup. The corn itself has a uh, genetically modified terminator gene in it. It has a pesticide that is designed to destroy the bodies of the beetles when they eat it. You think, is this, come on, is this physical or spiritual? It is physical, and listen to me. The devil can use bad food or bad medicine to make it hard for somebody to make the right decision. If somebody's addicted to drugs, you cannot trust them. You can't trust them. They love the drug, that feeling it gives, more than they love you, more than they love the truth, more than they love honesty and freedom. They'll do whatever it takes to get it, and that's not right. Now the problem is our food is getting weirder and weirder. I, I lovingly call the FDA the Drugging Our Food Administration because they have changed what goes into our food. And by the way, in this 2019 pandemic, when all of a sudden there was an emergency, the government said, go home, don't come to work and you're not allowed out in public, and we're going to burn these farms down, and we're going to kill all these pigs, and you got to pour out your milk. This was kind of weird. Some of you know what I'm talking about. There were several news articles about this. Well, now there's a state of emergency. And listen, during that, there was a state of emergency where they actually said, you can now make off-label substitutions without giving notice. Well, what does that mean? Well, you can sell organic corn, and it's not organic. You can sell a box of, uh, I don't know, Wheaties, Oh, and we didn't have any of this, so we put some of this chemical in, or we put sawdust instead of wheat. Oh, that's fine, as long as you keep the food flowing, because it's an emergency, you know. we got to do whatever we can because of the emergency. This is something that we've just lived through, these off-label substitu substitutions without notification, and this is dangerous. Uh, now, you're in 3 John 1. I want you to see this, because I do believe this is important. Look at verse 2. Beloved... I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, look at it, and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. It is a good thing to pray for the health of someone else. That's what he's saying. He says, I wish you're in good health. Why? So we can serve God. Let me tell you, we know people that are bedridden right now. They can't get up. They can't hug their children. Do you know how hard it is for them to go out and knock on a door and preach the gospel? Look, whenever you're feeling lazy, tired, oh, I just, I've just, I got a little bit of a headache, I don't feel like opening my mouth or going to church, you need to stop and just reevaluate things and say, you know what, I've got it really, really good. Even as bad as I feel right now, I am so blessed, I need to get up and open my mouth and do what God wants me to do. This is important. And food and drugs going into the mouth can destroy somebody's entire life. It can neutralize them spiritually. I was speaking with another pastor and he said his son went to the hospital for the, the C-19 cough and, and they gave him this drug that has 2,700 side effects and they knew it and his son died. Now there's a lawsuit over it. That's terrible. We got to be careful what we put in our body. I want you to, I'm going to share this uh, 
I, I want to say first, let me say this. You know, mo people have probably heard this. When you go to the grocery store, eat on the outside of the aisles. Because on the inside, it's all processed food. That's where your soda's at. That's where the boxed stuff, where they put it together, is at. If you eat on the outside, you've got your, your milk, your bread, your meat, right? The eggs, the veggies, the fruits, the deli. All that's on the outside. What's on the inside is very highly processed. The National um, uh, NIH, National Institute for Health, I was reading an article on their website this week. I saw a headline and I dug in to find out. There's a movement, there's a, some doctors are trying to get our government and other governments to label processed foods as dangerous. And they called it a tobacco style campaign. Now you, you guys probably haven't seen a box of cigarettes in a while, amen, but on the side it says, you know, warning, this may kill you and your eyes might bleed and, you know, all sorts of strange things. The, the, the ones in Europe are even worse. They have big skull and crossbones and uh, pregnancy abnormalities. And I mean, they're, they're pretty scary to read and it ought to be. And they say, that's what we want on boxed food, processed food. Listen to this. This, this is exact word for word off of their website, the NIH, which by the way, you guys go to Ecclesiastes 10. Go to Ecclesiastes 10. About the, they want these warning labels on processed food. And this is what the article said. This is part of the petition to make the change. It says, simply put, ultra-processed foods are foods that can't be made in your home kitchen because they have been chemically or physically transformed using industrial processes. Industrial. It takes... Industrial? That sounds kind of harsh. You mean like how they make... The stuff they spray on the lawn that kills all the good stuff? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, industrial processes. It says, they are recognizable on the supermarket shelf as packaged food that are ready to eat and contain more than five ingredients and have a long shelf life. The industrial processing, as well as the cocktail of additives, flavors, emulsifiers, that's the stuff that makes oil and water mix, though it shouldn't, and color they contain to give flavor and texture make the final product, listen, hyper palatable or more appealing and potentially addictive, which in turn leads to poor dietary patterns. They're saying your processed food is essentially a drug and it's addictive and it tastes better than the, the real thing. Hey, grandma's cookies, they're gonna go bad in about a week or two, but man, they're just right. You go down to Wally World and get some cookies, you can set them out and leave them for a month. They might be tough, but you can still eat them. They didn't mold yet. That's weird. Why don't they mold? Well, the chemicals, the industrial process that they use, the additives, the emulsifiers, it's highly palatable, it's addictive, and it causes poor dietary patterns. This is bizarre that we even have to have this conversation. Be careful what you eat. It might affect your brain. It might affect your body. It might affect your life. Now, if your judgment is impaired because of the addictive food that's on the table, and now all of a sudden these preventable diseases are, are introduced to you as normal food, and now you have these side effects, I just can't focus, and I hear ringing in my ears, and I don't know why I have this problem and that problem. It's like, well, maybe it's garbage in, garbage out, right? If we can protect their mouth, what goes into their body, we can actually potentially influence the future of their soul and their spiritual life. If you remember Daniel chapter 1, he purposed in his heart he would not defile himself. There was meat sacrificed to idols and strong drink. Daniel said, not interested. I don't want that going in my mouth. I will not defile myself. I'd rather fast. And listen, it's a no-brainer that some meat is better than others. Now, if I were to offer you a sample of grass-fed beef or squirrel, which one would you rather take? Oh, come on, the squirrel is wild caught. I'd go with the beef too. All right, I'd go with the beef. Now think about it, that's a no-brainer. Some meats are not as good as other meats, and we live in a world today where they say meat isn't meat. In fact, you're better off eating a chemical process where they take a bunch of stuff from a bunch of plants you shouldn't be eating anyway, and we put it and we call it meat. Well, that's not really meat, that's not really good for you. Oh, but it meets the nutritional value. It's right up there with some meats. I don't know. I don't trust it. Sounds fake to me. Sounds like a, a false witness, if you will. 
In Ezra 9, it says, eat the good of the land and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. Hey, eat the good of the land, not the bad, right? Isaiah 7, he says, butter and honey shall he eat. Boy, that's good news. It's talking about Jesus. Butter and honey. It didn't say margarine, which is plastic and the roaches won't eat it. It didn't say corn syrup. It said honey. Butter and honey shall he eat that they may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Isn't that interesting? He used good food with good judgment. Hey, Jesus said salt is good. Didn't say salt substitute. He said salt is good. It has its place as a preservative. We're likened unto the preservative in society. We prevent the decay, right? That's what we're supposed to be doing. We need to educate our children why God's food is better. No corn syrup, no margarine. You're in Ecclesiastes 10. Look at this. Ecclesiastes 10. Look at verse 16. Woe to thee, O land! When thy king is a child, and thy princes eat in the morning. Now, there's nothing wrong with eating breakfast. I know some people have to. Personally, I don't. I'd rather get on the road and just come home and eat dinner. But the point here isn't whether or not you're eating breakfast. The point here is the princes shouldn't be feasting all day long. When we get up and we have a feast first, you know, what about the work that needs to be done in the kingdom? This is what it's talking about. Poor judgment. All about elevating themselves. You see it in the contrast in the next verse. They weren't working. They're feasting. Verse 17 it says, Blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles, and thy princes eat in due season for strength and not for drunkenness. Have you ever seen somebody get a candy bar and they're, Oh man, I got, oh man. That's kind of eating for drunkenness. Right? Fasting is withholding. Then there's moderation. And over here is drunkenness. You can be drunk off of food, certain foods. I got to have that. I got to go. It's Taco Bell day. I got to go to Taco Bell. Do you know what's in there? I don't care. You know it's only 51% meat. I don't care. I want it. Okay, buddy. Whatever you want. But notice he says in verse 17, eat in due season. Here's the blessing. Eat in due season for strength. I think there's something to this periodic fasting or intermittent fasting. It's dealing also with portion control. Not being eating more than you need. You're eating to make your body healthy. You're not just eating to satisfy the taste buds. If you eat for your tongue, you know, it's going to destroy the rest of your body. You need to eat what you need and recognize what you need. It's important to be educated about these things. And I believe that's a godly characteristic. What God made, generally speaking, is good. Not all things are good. Some meats are called unclean, right? And some plants are poisonous. Remember, there was death in the pot when they threw those gourds in? So we should know that balance. And I know every creature of God is good, nothing to be refused. Eat squirrel if you want to, but not me, okay? I'll wait until I have to. I'll, I'll, I'll just hold out, okay? Go to Psalm chapter 1, if you would, please. Go to Psalm chapter 1. We're almost done. I appreciate your time this morning, and I hope that this is a blessing to you. I hope that this gives you an idea that we as parents have some authority over the body of our children, and if we can control certain factors then we can help them have a good life. They be godly individuals. So they don't turn out like the people that follow the Antichrist. They'll take whatever he's dishing out because they're addicted to it and they'll do whatever they say. They're told by the government, by the state, because they're dependent upon it. We need to be dependent upon God's Word. We need God's blessing on our families. And we as parents need to take control. Now, the last part, 